Hello, my name's Jess and today we're going to be speaking about how to build a hibernaculum for common frogs in your garden. Whether you have frogs or toads in your garden, this is going to be very useful, but knowing to identify the difference between the two is also very useful. So, <laughs> frogs are obviously smaller than toads and they are a lot smoother as well. The male frog will also be smaller than the female, so that helps you identify gender as well. Now is the perfect time to start building hibernaculums in your garden because frogs usually hibernate between October and March but unlike hedgehogs if you see them coming out within this time it's not so much of a worry because they do just want to come out, have a snack, have a wonder about as I'm sure you do sometimes in the night and then come back and settle back in. As I mentioned previously we are going to be making a hibernaculum today and I'm going to be talking you through the various steps of um, what you need to do to have one in your garden. What you're going to need to build this hibernaculum, you're going to need a spade, an area of garden that you know is not going to be disturbed and that you may or may not have seen frogs there but you know that they're around. They can move from up to 500 metres from where they've been spawning or breeding or where they are so there's always a possibility. Then you need a pile of sticks you need sort of some bricks or rocks that you know you can sort of um, you can put in the bottom um, but you don't want too many because over time the rain and sort of the winter weather will just naturally compress it and of course you don't want to you don't want to sort of pack it in too much because um, I'm sure you don't like being squished when you're asleep and neither do frogs. So for the rocks and sticks you can always just collect these on a nature walk on the way home from school even if you just have some sort of spare bits and pieces lying around back in your back garden they don't need to be store bought, they don't need to be anything special just whatever you can pick up and find really Okay so what we need is a pile of sticks, twigs broken down to about this size and then that will fit into your hole a nice selection of stones to go at the bottom you might even find some whilst you're digging which is always helpful and then you have your nice big bucket of soil from digging the hole that you will have here. That you will have here. <laughs> Bad camera angles, sorry. Once you've done that, you have a hole. Hopefully, one looking a bit like this 30 centimetres, 20 ish down. Obviously, if it's a bit more, a bit less, I haven't got a centimetre, I haven't got a ruler out. So, guesstimate. After filling in the hole that you've just dug, it's going to look a bit like that. A bit like sort of giving a few rocks a funeral, which I guess it kind of is, they won't see the light of day for maybe a while. Um, so the next stage is going to be filling it in with the sticks. Obviously, like I said earlier, do it loosely because um, you don't want to get crushed when you're asleep and other dead frogs. Okay, let's go. So after filling in the hole, the next step of this is going to be the bucket of soil that you collected when you dug out the hole in question. Um, you might have some sort of like just random piles and things as well that you can use to put over the top. Like I said, obviously this is going to help compact it and just make it a little bit more snug and cosy for whoever ends up in it. Could be a toad, could be a frog. We're not prejudiced. Whoever would like to use it. When placing the sticks in, remember it's supposed to be a bit like a corridor, so they're going to have sort of a corridor of little rooms of where to snuggle up for the winter. Um, after filling in the hole, it looks a little bit like this. Um, sometimes you can have them heaped, so it's a bit more obvious where you've put them. Um, I might put a few more sticks on top, just to sort of like, so it's obvious where you've put it. And also there's just a bit more, a few more corridors and a bit more space if needs be. Like any compost heap, leaf pile, um, log pile, it always looks a bit rough and ready. And you know what? So does this hibernaculum. It doesn't need to look beautiful, it's functional, it's going to benefit the wildlife. Once you have made your beautiful hibernaculum, do not forget to make a Naturehood account and let us know on the live feed, let us know what other Naturehood um, nature actions that you've been doing in your nature space. And um, can't wait to see all of your lovely hibernaculums on the live feed. Thank you very much, take care.